you done climbing the mountain of truth? You find the Baptists have been sitting there all along. Galaxies are spinning, but the stars in the middle go faster than the stars at the outside. So why do we still have spiral arms on the galaxies? They should not be there, okay? Galaxies are evidence that the Earth, the universe at least, is not billions of years old. Stars are blowing up all the time. It's called a supernova or a nova. But a star blows up about every 30 years, and yet there's less than 300 supernova re uh, fragments that have been found, remnants. That's only a few thousand years worth of stars. Why aren't there billions of supernova remnants? Some people say, well, new stars are forming in Crab Nebula or Eagle Horsehead Nebula. No, that's a bunch of baloney. We covered that on video 7. Nobody's ever seen a star form. The planet Jupiter is cooling off rapidly. Saturn, the stars are, are changing from red giants to white dwarfs. The textbook says it takes billions of years. We know that's not true. All the ancient astronomers said Sirius was a red star. Today it's a white dwarf. It happens in a few thousand years. Don't let them tell you it takes billions of years. Jupiter is cooling off rapidly constantly losing heat. It cannot be billions of years old. It would have been cold by now. Jupiter's moon Ganymede has a strong magnetic field, indicating a liquid core, meaning it is not billions of years old. Saturn's rings are expanding away from the planet. They cannot be billions of years old. There's more about that in the book In the Beginning by Walt Brown. Excellent book, by the way. The moon goes around the Earth. How many knew that already? The moon goes around the Earth. But you know, as the moon goes around the Earth, it's gradually getting farther away. We're slowly losing the moon. It's leaving us a couple inches a year. No big deal. Nothing to worry about. Plus, nothing you can do about it anyway. But the moon is getting farther from the earth every day. Now, kids, this is going to be complicated, so listen carefully. The moon is getting farther from the earth every day. So that means that it used to be closer. How many can figure this out with no help at all? Okay. Well, if you bring the moon in closer, you start to create a problem because the moon causes the tides. Now, you folks in Knoxville probably don't worry about the tides, but in Pensacola, you worry about the tides. See, if the moon was closer, the tides would be higher. There's a law called the inverse square law. If you brought the moon in to one-third the distance, you take the one-third, flip it over, and square it, it's nine times the gravitational pull. If you run all the math on this, you'll find out the moon and Earth would have been almost together 1.4 billion years ago. Walt Brown says 1.2 billion years ago is the max lifespan for Earth and moon. Well, if the moon was whizzing around just above the surface of the Earth, that explains what happened to the tall dinosaurs. They got mooned. Uh, Comets are flying around through space, but comets are constantly losing material. I mean, stuff blows off the tail of a comet. You can't just keep losing, okay? Pretty soon it's gone. You know, it's kind of like your checkbook. See, if your outgo exceeds your income, your upkeep will be your downfall every single time. Well, these comets are always losing material. That's something you just can't keep doing forever. Most astronomers say comets can't last more than about 10,000 years. Okay, well then, I have a question. Why do we still have comets out there? They should all be gone by now. I mentioned in a seminar years ago that comets is an indication that the solar system is less than 10,000 years old, and an atheist went home and devoted an entire website against me, anti hovend website. There are now over a 1,000. One guy told me there's closer to 2,000 anti hovend websites. I'm so proud of myself. My son and I answer most of them on our video series, Answering the Critics. And if you, we also have a radio program every day. People can call in, ask their questions. It was the Creation Science Hour. It's now an hour and a half, 4.30 to 6 every day, Central Time, right on the Internet. Go to drdino.com and click on the, follow the links to the Creation Science Hour. And you can write in with your questions. We get people calling from all over the world that are really angry because they believe in evolution. Well, this one scoffer on his website said, Hoven, don't you know that a Dutch astronomer back in 1950, his, his name was Jan Oort, he proposed, it means he hoped, he wished, he prayed, that there was a great shell of comets out there and new ones keep coming in to replace the old ones that are burning out. So his, his, he said, the reason we still have comets is because new ones are replacing the ones that are burning up. They called it the Oort cloud of comets. He said this Oort cloud is 50,000 astronomical units away. 
Well, if you don't know what an astronomical unit is, it's the distance from the sun to the earth. That's one astronomical unit. It's pretty hard to see Pluto without a really good telescope. And Pluto is only 39 astronomical units away. You're never going to see a comet at 50,000 astronomical units, that's for sure, okay? Nobody's ever seen this Oort cloud. Oort never saw the Oort cloud. The whole thing's based on a mathematical mistake. There is no Oort cloud. Even Carl Pagan, a Sagan, said, Many scientific papers are written each year about the Oort cloud, its properties, its origin, its evolution, yet there's not a shred of direct observational evidence for its existence. There is no Oort cloud. But this scoffer on his website said, Hoven, if you want to use the comet argument, you know, to prove the Earth is young, it's up to you to prove, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that the Oort cloud and other sources don't exist. Wait, 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 wait. How would you prove the non-existence of something? Wouldn't I have to be all places at the same instant to prove something doesn't exist? Mm -hmm. What he's trying to do here is called shifting the burden of proof. The liberals do it to us all the time, and we fall for it. I'll show you how easy it is to do. Okay? Suppose I said, watermelons are blue on the inside until you cut the skin. Prove I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. That's called shifting the burden of proof. That'd be pretty hard to do, wouldn't it? As soon as you cut the skin, oh, see, it turned red. I was right. It was blue a second ago. <laughs> he says, I have to prove there's no Oort cloud. Now, wait, 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 Dave. Here's what we know. We know we have comets. We know they don't last more than about 10,000 years. We know the Bible says the earth is 6,000 years old. I don't have a problem with comets. But he wants to make it look like I have a problem with comets when he's the one who's got the problem. The Bible says the heavens declare the glory of God. It's interesting, evolution theory has the sun and stars evolving before the earth. The Bible says God made the earth before the sun and stars. Everything about the evolution theory is backwards to the Bible. Every single thing, absolutely backwards. These theories don't match. Everything's backwards. The Bible says man brought death into the world. Evolution says death brought man into the world. The Bible says God created man, and evolution says, no, man created God. These theories are polar opposite. People say, couldn't God use evolution to create? Well, he could have, but it's not the God of the Bible, that's for sure. The God that would use evolution is cruel, wasteful, and retarded. It's not a God you'd want to pray to, that's for sure.